thanks for joining me on the t- episode number 22 of the Dent Digest live show. Got a special guest here, and I, we actually have uh, another one that's going to join us here shortly. What's up, Vince? How are you? Oh, not too bad, Ryan. How you doing, bud? Uh, you know, trying to get uh, back to East Coast time. It's been a little bit of an adjustment, you know. The, the little bit of sleep we did do in Vegas, it still messed me up. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of work talking to all those people, right? It was. It was. So what did you, what was your, I don't want to get into, you guys did a little recap on your show on MTE. What did you think about the MTE this year? Me personally, I loved it. Uh, It wasn't just the fact that it was, you know, three and a half hour drive for me. It was the fact that uh, I got to hang out with a whole bunch of good people and different people than usual, you know, going to uh, Florida for since 2006 now. Uh, a lot of the West Coast guys or west of Colorado Rockies really don't venture out that far. And, and it was actually really cool meeting a lot of new people. It was. It was for me. It's I don't get to see the West Coast guys. You know, I, uh, I, I East Coast it dominates Orlando. So, you know, it's uh, always see those guys. And the good thing is like, with me doing this show and the little bit of videos that we do, there's a lot of West coast guys that watches. So I get to spend a little bit of time with those guys. You know, there was a guy, a big ant from premium dent repair Uh follows all of my stuff. Comments, always a super nice guy and super energetic and just appreciative. And it was just nice to get to spend time with them. You know? Yeah. Big ant. He, uh, he's up in Daniel Graham's neck of the woods. Yeah. And, uh, he took my IMI class on Thursday at MTE. And first time, I mean, he came in hugging. It's like, oh, oh. Vince, man, I listen to every podcast. I love you and all that stuff. And uh, turns out he plays drums, or not drums, but congas and bongos yeah. and all sorts of stuff. I'm like, dude, go to, you know, uh, Guitar Center and get something. <laughs> rock out. Rock out at MTE. <laughs> he almost he did. He was so passionate about paintless gun repair. That yeah. That's what, when I get back from MTE, that's what energizes me. Absolutely. You know, just the the industry guys, the the littler guys that are just trying to still figure it out. You know, he's still a newer tech, so he was still trying to figure out, you know, uh, where his place is. And it was just his personality and his enthusiasm was just it was it was awesome. You know? It was, yeah. I you know, a lot of people were saying it was a lot more laid back than. Uh, than florida do you, did you feel that yeah you know what it was it was the weed oh right they, they all went to the dispensaries huh? <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even think about that <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't as crazy i remember orlando at caribe and even last year people running through that front door yeah you've got two booths everybody seems to go to you know it's always Stanliner, kiko mm-hmm. It's always these couple draws that that people are running to. So it was the same thing with Stanliner this year. You know, it was bonkers over there. Sure. You know what the funny thing about that was? Like myself and, and Toledo, we two years ago, while we were running around MTE, uh, we were we were videotaping and filming and doing interviews at different booths. I don't think I I don't think they probably sold 10 tools at the Stanliner booth. You know, and what a difference a year makes or two years, yeah. you know, go back three, four years at the Kiko booth, Chris White would just be standing there. And no one would be talking <laughs> yeah. at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I what remember. a difference, you know, a three, four years makes in this industry. Once we get these tools in our hands, we start using them. It's like, holy cow. You know, it's just amazing. I think social media is a big help. You yeah. know, um, just like today, I saw Hudson doing some reviews on quick reviews on Facebook, on tabs, on the B and D prop and lock. And it, it's that point of getting those tools out that the guys don't have yet. Yeah. You know, the East coast guys that didn't go to that don't have these tabs that are magical. You know, oh, it's, yes. it's, it's, I have it's nice to right here. Wait, a fresh pack. <laughs> Look at that. It smells like money. It does. <laughs> but you know, it, it's, the innovation at this show was, I think it was more innovation at this show than it was in Orlando last year, as in tool innovation. Mm-hmm. 
What I noticed with a lot of the tool companies right now is they're not really waiting to release tools at MTE Orlando or, or and the new one, Vegas. They're, as soon as they come in, they're releasing them because they have the, the platform or social media now that they could get them out there right away, uh, start a buzz about them. You know, the buzz either goes good or goes south. Yeah. And then now you have these shows coming up uh, and you have PDR World Cup coming up here in, in November as well. You know, you're, you'll be able to go and sample these tools and uh, feel them out because, you know, I'd like to have tools in my hand before I, I buy something. I'm the same honest. way. So I'm a feel and touch guy. I am. Yeah. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to be close to ultra dent tools here in dent gear when they were here in California. Uh, I'm right around the corner from B&D. So I, I've gotten those tools in my hand. But uh, there's other tools, you know, A1s and stuff like that, that I don't always get right away that we could actually touch and feel when we go to these shows, you know? And I just to touch on what you just said with A1, um, I had a lot of calls when I got back from MT about Maria. Um, you know, she had a terrible accident. And I, she's got a long road ahead of her. You know, there were uh, some confusion that people thought that there was a accident, a car accident. You know, uh, she was actually burned. She fell into her hot tub and it's got a little bit of a road. I, I see uh, they put a little statement out today, which was good. So yeah. he's kind of answered some questions for some of these guys. But, you know, it's always tough when in our niche industry, when someone really goes down hard, that's in the industry you know she was on facebook she was always at the show smile on her face all the time so you know it was nice at mte to see the small niche community get together do a raffle and you know auction off some tools and it was just nice to see how fast i mean that was one day that whole thing got put together and and, and put out there yeah yeah and it's one of those things too because john callenbeck is a very private man uh i i'm sure he was probably he was more focused on his wife and, and what had just happened in yes. his family and his beautiful three daughters that, you know, just had a terrible accident happen to their, their mother. But, uh, he personally put that up on the internet today to let everyone know, you know, what happened because you know how the gossip mill goes around and before oh, yes. you, know, you know, yeah, I, I, I heard, um, first thing in the morning and I called John Vidin, the dent reaper. And cause I know he's super close with them. And just kind of let him know he wasn't even awake, but I could tell I was kind of taking the wind out of his sails. So, yeah. Um, but the good thing is they've got a lot of support behind them. Um, not even just in the paintless dent repair industry, more into their personal family, super close. So I, I think she'll be fine. So, yeah. yeah. And know. that raffle wasn't for money. They don't need money. They, they yeah. do well on their own it, it was more to buy uh gift cards for groceries and uh, they were sending those uh gift cards from the raffle to the calendars and it was a lot of it was like 4200 bucks or something wasn't it yeah it, it got up there i know uh john vidine i guess it's vidine huh? i've been calling him the dean for ages maybe you know, you're saying it right and i'm wrong no i i think you're right i in fact i was corrected on the dean <laughs> No, <laughs> like at at MTE, but I, he he's never corrected me. Someone's like, uh, "It's Vidine." Like, okay, anyway. I call him the uh, Dent Reaper, so it's the much easier. Reaper. Yeah, he was there. His tools were there. He was kind enough to uh, donate some tools to the PDR Tool Time booth, which is now called the PDR Tool Time Playground. It's the playground. Yes. Which I, I want to give you guys credit. It was a great idea. Yeah, and... that's Daniel's idea. It was Daniel's. I think you guys need to just keep rolling with it. I think it'll get better with time. I think it was a lot because there was always someone that was stuck in the booth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a really good, you know, you could go in there and you could try a tool and, and feel it out. Okay. I've never tried that dent reaper rod. Let me try that. Let me see if I like it. I, I think it's a great idea. And, and you had quite a bit of tools over there. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, quite a few. I think what uh, our concern was like with theft, for some reason we were thinking, oh, you know, people are going to walk off with tools or technicians or whatever. Uh, so they cordoned off the area rather than having it wide open to just walk in. So I think people were standing on the outside thinking, oh, I need to stay out here or, or 
whatnot, just look at the tools. Every time I saw someone standing out there, I said, hey, grab a tool. Come on in. You know, come on in and test it out and see. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, like it. I, and it's even scary at that show. It's scary at a lot of the events, even like Ants and Open House. You could really walk away with anything you wanted. Yeah. Any any one of these shows. But I think there's a lot of respect in our industry. You know, guys that are going to this event respect because it is small niche companies. You know, just like your your Magnatech Matt. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, you are a millionaire off of it. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Please walk it's, off with them if you see them laying around at uh, any event. <laughs> it's so it's such a niche market and it takes forever for you guys to recoup any of the cost on these things so yeah. i always try to explain to guys why does this tool cost this because you have no clue what it takes to machine tools to right. make this stuff how long did it take you to really produce this oh geez it well technically that's version two and it took me two and a half years to perfect that yeah version one was good but version two is great and i'm very proud of it uh, you got to get the kinks out. And usually they say when you come up with a product, it takes, you know, version two or three before you get it right. Uh, fortunately, I, I really think I knocked it out of the park with version two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, do you have any version ones left? Nope. I'm not making version ones at all anymore. We Good. sold out of them. And uh, I'm, it, there, I will make black ones. They'll just be version two uh, style. Two. Yeah. I do like the larger lip around the side yeah yeah and when i when i made it it wasn't just for the pdr industry i have mechanics buy it i have gunsmiths buy it all sorts of people do buy it. crafts craftsmen people and stuff like that so it, it surprisingly enough ryan that that mat will hold five cups of fluid really before, if yeah before it flows over <laughs> because of that lip that's crazy so and then it cleans right up it's chemically resistant you know it cleans up and you're good to go so if you look at all the tools you bought at MT, what would you say, this is my number one tool that I was excited about? <clears throat> uh, number one would probably, it's going to be the, the Blem bubble tips or balloon tips that I have one, a couple here. I'll show you. I'll show you the smaller one so it shows up on camera a little bit better. But did you get these at all? All he he had his set pulled aside for me. I, I told him to, to make sure he sells it. Um, I really wanted the twenty four inch one. Uh, yes. Um, and I actually used it. And Daniel always gives me a hard time because I never smile. So I sent him like the biggest cheese smile picture holding it <laughs> because it's an awesome tool. Now, if you look at that tip, let me get. Oh, I'm on that camera. That's why. Okay, so. People were asking, well, is it shaved? Yeah, it's pretty shaved down. It could actually, it's perfectly shaved. Yeah. A lot of the times when I get a whale tail, I'll take a file to it mm -hmm. and get a little bit more sharpness so I could cut through glue a little bit better. But this is really flat and shaved already. Uh, they do not, these tools are hard to make. They're forged. Yes. You know, this like is a not samurai hard. sword. That's what how Mark explained. We went to dinner and he says, uh, those things took me forever to make. Yeah. You know, um, I told him, I said, make a video on how you're making it. He's like, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> secret, secret stuff going on in that tool. So, sure. you know, it, it, I used it. It pushes really soft. It doesn't give you the little sharp high spots in it. Yeah. And it cuts through the glue and the brace like nothing else I've, I have. Yeah. I made the mistake of telling Daniel or telling someone next to Daniel that it's not going to work good on a sharp dent, right? And he came flying across the room and was like, whoa, 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 no, what are you talking about? It's perfect on a sharp dent. You know, you can get the center out really quick and this and that. I'm like, okay, I, I was just kind of making an observation that I don't think it's really going to work on a sharp dent. But uh, yeah, it was... I haven't used it on a sharp dent yet, but I it saved my butt on the bottom of a door of a Tacoma, uh, rear door of a Tacoma. I went right down through the wiring loom and right through that brace and right. boom, rocked that sucker out within yeah, seconds. Nice, and uh, Q's saying he missed out on them. I know it's going to take Mark a little while to, to make another batch, but yeah. 
they it, as soon as they come available, you better buy them because they're badass. Yeah, uh, I believe that they're shooting for MTE, uh, MTE Orlando for the next batch. I thought you were going to tell me another MTE this year. I was going to freak out. <laughs> MTE Vegas. You're going to have to wait for a whole year. Um, the, the difference. One thing I wanted to point out, Ryan, with them. I'll take the longer one. They're ten, or what is it called? The Samurai? Technique? Forged. Forged. Okay. So when they forge it, it's from round stock. So he's flattening all this out and it's shaved all the way up. But once you get past the shave part, it's back to being a bendable, bendable tool. Yeah. Like you can bend this any way you want. You could bend it in a complete circle and uh, and slip it however you need to get it into a panel. But the strength is all in the front of it. So all the twisting motion, it's never going to twist sideways on you at all. Yeah. Yeah. I asked him. I, I had some older... There was an older tool that was somewhat close to that. It was an old dent wizard whale tail. Yeah. And the end would always twist. So we oh. were at dinner and I said, is the head going to twist on this thing? And he looks at me serious. You know, Mark's a serious guy. He looks right at you and he says, if the head, head twist twist on this thing, you're doing something wrong. and We've got major problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, it, with the forge process, you know, it's in hot fire bring it out, you know, it's just like knife making or, or samurai sword making. He said each one of those, you know, are legitimately handmade. Yeah. So he, I think the price point's right for a whole set for, you know, for what you have there. What's it? Five tools, right? Or four? It's, uh, four. It's basically a hundred bucks a tool. Yeah. So uh, think about the small one here. Okay. Think of this at 50, but the large one's 150. You know, yeah. either way, however you want it, want to, you know, figure it out. But, uh, yeah, it's really, it's a lot like our old Dent Wizard PDL one, twos, and threes. Those were forged as well. Yes. But let me ask you this, Ryan. Why did you twist it? Were you heating that crap up red hot? I'm sure. Oh. Yes. Yes, of course I was. That's what we do, you know? That's what we did. But it destroyed the forging of it or the yeah. tempering of it by doing I, I even have some Dentcraft whale tails now that, that I heated over the years and they're all bent up and weird shaped and purple and blue. But, you know, back in the day, I remember heating tools that were glowing red and jamming them in the doors and the terrible smell of the glue. And yeah, I call it my sacrificial whale tails. <laughs> yes. I don't yeah. fix a dent with it. I just sacrifice it to cut through the glue and then put it away. <laughs> it's funny because I, I remember when Shane first started with me, he pulled this thing out and it's, I mean, it is just kind of looks like a snake, you know, it's all worn out. And he's like, what is this? I'm like, that's the baddest glue cutter you'll ever have. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Scotto? And the, and the Dent Reaper's in here. Look at that. Oh, the Dent Reaper and John Scotto from Boston. The Scotto. It's the first time I met John. He's a super nice guy. You know, oh, he's super cool. He's he's fun to hang out with. He and, and he's uh, an East Coast boy. So East Coast. He know. loves tools too, man. I mean, he buys a lot of tools and he loves the Stanliner collection as well. He does. He bought a couple there. Let me ask you this, Ryan. The issue that I, I have a lot of Stanliner tools. I don't have a crap ton like Scotto or or some other guys out there. Uh you know, Don Cavanaugh, he's got a crap ton too. But why do you think that they make limited edition standliner tools? I mean, if it's great, don't you think they should be making like hundreds of them or thousands? I think because everything's handmade again. You know what I mean? I think Kaz is very selective in what he's making. You know, he's 70 some years old, so yeah, yeah. he's touching every one of those tools. I, I don't know. I don't understand some of that. Um, you know, like that tool that uh, Mike Toledo got, that spoon. Yeah. That thing looks awesome. And they only had two of them there. So that's it. Yeah. I don't know the reason. Yeah. It, it's a little bit baffling to me because, I mean, I I had a, a I have a technician that I, I help out and and uh, and coach a little bit at my shop. And he buys a ton of stand liner tools. And, you know, Thomas usually tells him, hey, this is a limited edition. I'm thinking, why is it? 
limited edition. You know, yeah. it's a great tool. Make a ton of them. You know, uh, I know I understand like the difference between pirate hooks because Kaz is making everything by by hand or yeah. killer whale. They they vary from you know tool to tool. But don't stop making them if it's a great tool. We all need one. Yeah, and you're gonna sell them. You know what I mean? I mean, I think they left with like 14 tools. You know, I mean, it was a small box that he was shipping back. Yeah. I was hoping they would just fall into my luggage, but it didn't work. (laughs) I didn't realize he had any left. I would have gone over there and and talked to him. Yeah, it was, it was not much left. So, um, but the dent trials too. I mean, that, some of that stuff was brutal. Mm -hmm. Um, the cool I, thing, I saw a lot of the new tools being used over there, too. Yeah, which is kind of shocking, too, because you would think that you would go to Old Faithful and use w- what you know, right? Yeah. Especially that nasty dent on that door. The rear door, I think, was definitely worse than the front door. Yeah. <laughs> it looked sharper. I, I don't know. I don't know if I could fix that in an hour. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a trial, right? Manny's just a freak. He is. He's in my neck of the woods. I, I met him for the first time at our uh, tech meetup. And uh, really nice guy. Good technician. We're trying to, uh, me and Scott are going to try to put one together for the East Coast. So we'll see what happens here. We're going to have to look at scheduling and we're getting into winter. So. Well, maybe that's a good time to do it. I think so. Even though it hailed yesterday in Colorado. So you never know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? You never know. You never know. So a tool that I picked up, I'm a big carbon tech guy. I do a ton of roofs. I probably do more roofs than most people in the country. Um, And I love the carbon tech rod. It just does what I need it to do. And this new hanger from Chad and Todd is badass. I used it today. Um, There's a couple things I really like about it. A lot of guys like that sliding on the, the regular hanger. Mm-hmm. I don't a lot of times because I'm putting so much pressure and sometimes it's moving around more than I like. Yeah. Yeah. This kept it really stable. You know, it didn't move a whole lot. And I like that I could move it just a little bit because it spins. I like that I could just move it a little bit each way to, to do the dent and how easy this slides inside the door. So a lot of times like my door hanger, I'll have to open the door and then slide it over get it in there. This is slick enough to where it just slides inside that door. Nice. Is there and something on the top of that that protects it? Uh, there's uh, not. So I asked Chad this. So yeah. when, when I first saw the the couple pictures that he posted and I said, uh, I'm a little worried about the top. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I know Chad really well, you know, and, and he's a very methodical thinker and, and thinks a lot of things out. So if you take, uh, either what is it you could do todd's or chad's hanger and this is in the door this is almost the same surface area as the regular rods the the hanger that he uses in his hanger it's like a little nylon piece and i was yeah, worried yeah. about this damaging the rail right sure scratching it or something along there but it's so smooth i mean it's polished plastic I'm not saying it won't scratch it but we're gonna but it's find also out. something you might be able to just take a little bit of sandpaper to in your polisher and polish it yeah. out if you get a nick or something like that. Yeah, I really like the end cap to it. You know what I mean? To where this does not come off. Yeah. Um, oh, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. It's what a, is, what's the strap made out of underneath? It's a same material as it's this ratcheting material, almost like a snow boot ratchet. Um, uh-huh. And then it's got a. I actually took it off today. It's almost got like a nylon, soft nylon material um, band that goes on there. Oh, gotcha. Some webbing. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's soft enough. A lot of guys were worried about scratching rods or, you know, this makes it to where it, if I think if it was plastic, it would be too slick. This kind of yeah. slows it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, price points right at 149 bucks. Oh, that's but, sweet. They're coming out with some. I didn't get it because I don't have a Carbon Tech hood stand. But did you see their new ratchet ratcheting system for the Carbon Tech? No. So they've got this new ratcheting system for hoods and trunks that hooks to Todd's uh, Carbon Tech stand. 
Oh, really? So oh. Um, it's kind of got these different hooks. It uses the same kind of ratchet idea. Yeah. They've got I, I they've got some really cool stuff. They're going to have some new stuff out for Orlando MTE. So um, that's part of the problem when you work booths. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to run around and see everything. And I know, you know, two days. Uh, what's up, Jason? Uh, two days. It seems like a long time. You know, you're you're basically in there for what six, seven hours. A oh day. yeah. But I mean, I was doing the PDR tool time booth and the IMI booth, and I was teaching a class and popping over to the Anson booth and helping those guys out. So I mean, conversations <clears throat> I had with people, I I regret not being able to spend more time with people because it was like five minutes tops per person. It's like okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. I you know. And you're wiped out. I mean, I could see it on your face from teaching that class. You're you're fried. Oh, fried. You know? uh, someone's wife came over to me at the bar uh, Thursday night, and I was just you know glazed over. <laughs> yeah. She's uh, she's like, you know, men only have a certain amount of words that they could say in a day before they just shut down. I'm like, well, I've reached that point, honey. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> give me give me a whiskey. <laughs> When is your next IMI training? The next one's in Greeley, Colorado at Cole Fox's place for the Me oh, Mega Media event. Super cool. And uh, they got the Mega Media on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then uh, we'll be doing the IMI on Sunday. And then after that, we have uh, the PDR World Cup in Branson, Missouri, right yes. after. Yes. So. Mark Blem keeps trying to persuade me to come to that event. It's just, there's a lot of traveling this year. It was never no. like this before. No, it, it, and it's not easy to get to Branson. Uh, I got to do some, some jogging around the country to get there, but uh, I, I really want them to be successful. I think I want everyone to be successful, whether yeah. you're a tool manufacturer or a dent technician. I mean, there's so much room in this industry for, for growth. I mean, we're just, we're teenagers right now. We need to move on and move forward, you know? I think it's it's definitely growing, and it's nice because perfect example the the class that uh, Dave Stream and Lynn and Mike Toledo talked in that was like a amazing how much information that they were putting out there for the guys. It was yeah. it was packed full. I, I'm surprised how much you know because when you go to those, Mike doesn't hold back. I mean, he gives out the, his secrets and techniques. Yeah. And usually he holds that stuff for mega media. So if you get an opportunity to do it at, at an MTE, you should really jump on it. Yeah. So what else you got? What else was your number two pick there? Uh, number two. Well, it's, I got a couple prototypes that, uh, you know what, that not everyone has just yet, but this sucker right here, I don't know if you can yes. see it well. This is a tool that comes from New Zealand. It's a slide hammer. It's massive. I wish I could switch my other camera, but uh, the weight of it, it's probably like seven or eight pounds. It's yeah, heavy. I think he said. I think he said seven and a half or something. I don't remember where. That so thing sick. It is awesome. the 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 cool part, which is a patent a patented tip, because this is actually th three years in the making now. He's made it so you have you know the regular tip on it for your glue tabs or you spin this down and you flip it around and tighten it back up now you have the pass through so uh that alone is a great option but uh where i where we're really going to use this mainly is going to be with uh glexo because you need that power behind uh the glexo to pull it out successful yeah. or fast and you need the shock value of it right yeah so there's not springs in the back there's actually two washers and they're not flat washers they're actually yeah, they're domed they're domed so it takes that impact when you slap it it that's you feel it but it doesn't feel like a, a regular slide hammer when you go metal to metal it's more it's cushioned so and those washers might flatten out over time just because of the sheer weight of this thing i mean it's it's heavy. Yeah, that thing is well made. So you know, 
it, it, it's not, it's very, it's anodized. I mean, it is, it is a, and he is, he, that the guy that created that is so passionate about that tool kind of had it hidden for almost till the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, the only other one that I know that's in the United States is with Don Kavanaugh, which got it yeah. a few months ago. Uh, it, it's my understanding. And just to give you an idea, if you guys know who Barry McTarsey is, he's the creator of the doodah. Well, Shane Griffin, the guy that came up with this slide hammer, that's his best friend. So Barry just spent a month in New Zealand with, with Shane, helping him develop some other tools and whatnot. But uh, very, very well made. It, it really is. I, I can't wait for it to come out. I just can't imagine what the shipping is going to cost from New Zealand. Don't worry. Yes. That's been solved. Uh -oh. It's going to be manufactured in Texas, and Anson is going to carry it. That's awesome. So that's going to save us all because who knows what that's. I think the price point is going to be about 250 on that. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad at all. Hey, Matt, uh, I'm not sure. I I haven't touched a care point slide hammer. I don't know how heavy it is. Uh, have you touch, touched one? I have not. I have not tried one. But Matt, come up to Orange County. Come test it out. Or, uh, you know, we're going to have a tech meet up in California again on December 17th, I believe. I'll bring Look it there. These guys. these guys doing all the tech meetups. So you <laughs> have, and that's what I said to Scott. I said, there, there's not a whole lot of, east coast guys like it is in california that are passionate about tent, paintless dent repair i mean unless you're with the Wiz or or some of these other companies it's it's going to be a little bit of a reach but i think it'll be a good time i, I know we were talking about doing it at scotto's because he's got that new badass shop so well how long of a drive is it for you to scotto's like 10 hours oh i'm, okay. I'm gonna take the train oh that's right <laughs> yeah okay that yeah Okay, because I'm thinking, because there are guys that traveled all over the place from oh yeah, uh, south, uh, south, uh, Southern California. We actually had a guy from Sacramento, which that's not an easy drive. That's a 300-mile drive. Whew. Uh, that came down. Uh, that looked like a great event, though. It was cool. It really did. Yeah. It really did. Um, I, I wasn't expecting 45, 48 technicians to show up. We ran out of burgers. We had to go get some more. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Nobody could have shown. You guys are superstars, so they were going to show up. I don't know about that. They just wanted the the, the giveaways, the raffles. Yes, well, we didn't guys know. love raffles. We didn't. We didn't know we were going to do that. That's no. actually no. We we they were kind enough. Ultra was kind enough, and everyone kind of was kind enough to uh, donated it. And I was out of pocket about five six hundred dollars with food and beer. Wow! And someone came up with the idea: let's do a raffle for those tools and uh reimburse yourself so yeah that's cool yeah so it all kind of worked out so my next batch of tools that i'm super excited about the dead center crease tabs mm, yes these things so I, I use these the last two days if you don't have them just trust me go get them it's 80 dollars for the uh a variety pack it's worth every dime I've used it every day since I've been back from MTE, and uh, they're they're sick. They are sick. I mean, this the the pull on these things. Um, you know the I, I really like the dark blue over the ice. I was telling Mike this the other night. I said I, I really think that the dark blue pulls harder. I know it flexes more than the ice, but I used it on some aluminum, and it, the dark blue seemed to work really well for me. So, oh, okay. It's all preference, you know. It's all. Um, it's going to depend on the dent, right? Yeah, it's a really good kit. Uh, the other thing that I picked up from Kiko, I don't know if you guys saw this. It's probably going to make a lot of noise. Their little Glexco kit. So they came out with their own little Glexco kit, and it's got a couple things in here. It has all the standard Glexco tabs, the same sizes, but they're made out of the same ice material. Um, and one feature, I was always with my sticky tab tape and my, um, uh, what's it called? And the uh, original Sergio cold glue was it would get everywhere. You know, yeah. I always had wax paper on it all curled up. You pull it out, you look like a caveman peeling it off. But they came out with these nice little caps. Uh, Chris White tells me that the Glexco is not going to stick to it. 
Um, so we're going to see. I've got a pretty good smash tomorrow, so I'm going to tr maybe do a live video on this whole kit while I'm using it and, and see what it does. I don't know if the pull is going to be different with the plastic than it would with the stainless tabs. So. And just for the record, they're not copying. They're not. They're working in conjunction with. Glexco. Yeah, they're working with them. So this tab says Kiko and Glexco on the tab itself. Yeah. So um, they're working together. They sell it with the glue. It comes with a Glexco glue pack. And the other option, since uh, Kiko is so big into trying to work with the body shops is they came out with these eyelets and what these eyelets do for the body shop guys are you can unscrew the the stud out of it and when you unscrew the stud you can put the eyelet right on the tab and they can pull it with their frame machine or or uh um, or regular dent pullers that they have that have that hook the hook yeah exactly. so i think it was a great addition to what they were trying to do i i just think it's a multi-function um, I have an older slide hammer from a body shop, so I may even use that because it's much heavier than what I have. So, yeah, that was a, a great addition. I think it was two hundred and thirty bucks for the whole kit, um, and I, I just think it looked like a good deal. I, I didn't have any Glexco, so we're gonna see what happens tomorrow. That was one of my big regrets. One of my big regrets was not getting that kit. Uh, for some reason, I, I didn't get over there. I got my bag of, of tabs, but I, I I caught Chris White wa walking out the door with everything. I said, I, what do you need? I go, oh, I need those dead center tabs. But I totally forgot to get that. And now that you said that with you know the caps, no, they're, they're silicone. And I, I my product is made out of silicone, and silicone is not cheap. Yeah. And to make a mold for that, that's there's there's big bucks involved with just making it. <laughs> And, and you had Chris on the show and they don't even make their own molds. You know what no. I mean? They're so yeah. to make this, it, it's not an easy, cheap product. No, no. You know, it's got their logo embossed in it. It's got this tab, it's, you know, it's, it's a well-made piece. So yeah. yeah. I wonder, it, I'll have to check it on my mat. Maybe the Glexo won't stick on my mat either. It's silicone. We're going to try it tomorrow. Yes. Yes. We're going to uh, give the world. What do you call it? The uh, like uh, like silicone is three dollars a pound, and my mat has three pounds of silicone. That's fifteen dollars of that's crazy. Just in my mat alone, uh, you know, you were talking about cost and molds yeah. and stuff. Like that. You know, the, my mold was fifteen thousand dollars for my Magnatech mat. So for them to to go and make you know covers for yeah. our Glexo tabs, you know. I'm sure it's not fifteen thousand dollars for those, but it's it's probably up there. It's, yeah, I mean it's going to take them a long time to recoup. Yes, their their investment. Um, <clears throat> they've really pushed, and uh, Gene Fetty and all those guys are really doing a good job promoting it. <clears throat> and uh, did you see uh, their new leverage tool that they have for the arm? Yeah, for yeah. did you yes. use that at all? I haven't. No, I think it's still in prototype mode. They don't have the the actual tips that'll lock onto a, a tool just yet. The force of that tool and the little bit of effort you have to do is really scary. Yeah. Um, you know, you're you're not really moving the tool. You're just barely moving your arm, and it rests on here, and it drives. I mean, it that thing was scary. Are you still an upside down guy? Periodically. You know, okay. I, I have kind of slid up now. I'm kind of working like this on a stool, or but I do still go upside down. Okay, so I'm I don't know still upside down, so I'm not sure how that's going to work for me. And the other thing I said to Gene Fetty with that is, I, I think it's really going to be a selective type of dent that you're going to have to use on it because of that arm may hit the back side of the door. You know, yeah. if the dent's farther back, it, you're, you're you need a lot of room there. So, but it is adjustable, so I don't know. You know, it was ratcheting. They they had one for the ultra rods. They had one for a for the A one ratcheting system. So it looked like a pretty good tool. Yeah. Well, Greg <clears throat> Dyer about six months ago coined the year of the handles, and that's just one more that's coming out. You know, yeah. there's so many new handles that are are uh, starting to be more ergonomically correct for us. That is saving us. You know, a lot of wear and tear on our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. So Matt's asking, give me the negatives of MTE 
one show a year, an alternate between Vegas and Orlando. No, oh, the alternate. <clears throat> well, you got to keep in mind, in, they're in business to make money as well. You know, this yeah. isn't a charity for MTE. I don't think they make a killing off of our show. Uh, I don't think they made, they probably broke even in Vegas. Yeah. But, uh, you know, look at Orlando. There's there's about 6,000 attendees. I'm sorry. Was that? Yeah, I think last year or the year before was like 6,000 attendees yeah. you know, between detailers and all that. I think we had about 1,100. The the actual numbers haven't come through yet. We didn't, we didn't get them just yet. So I'm going to both. Uh, I would, as a technician, I I... I don't see a difference really. Uh, you're either going to go to one or the other, or maybe both. It's like hanging out with cool people. And that, that's my that's what I said uh, in another show. I just said I I don't know of the draw, you know, the draw of of both shows. What what's going to make me fly five hours compared to two hours? So I and I don't know what they can do to make a draw. You know, I, I don't know. I think as a vendor, you need to be at both. Yeah. Because I know the ones that did not have a booth that showed up, I know, like Carl Stuckey was there, Dent Reaper was there checking it out, testing the waters. I think they probably regretted not having a booth because they probably could have sold some product. Yeah. What's five hours? I guess Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. Maybe talking about Baltimore. I think it's farther than five hours. Okay, not 10. It's okay. Yeah. We'll either. figure it out. I'm coming, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not driving. Right. Um, I, hey, Matt, how did you do, you know, with your, with your, uh, with your never lose stuff? I mean, I love the a kick ass product. booth. He did. He put a lot that a light box. That was the first thing I said to him. I said, this light box is badass. He's like, you know, it's lit backlit. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it looked good. It looked like, like a SEMA booth. You know what I mean? I mean, he put a lot of time in that booth. So oh, Daniel's calling. <clears throat> Uh oh, he's probably saying I didn't get the email. So yes, I mean Jason's saying that the uh, Vegas show was was close knit. Um, there was definitely tighter groups of people that really had good conversations. Um, there was good conversations, quality conversations. Um, it, it it was just different, and and you could kind of migrate from one group to the next group and get into their conversation and have those conversations. I mean, we sat Jason, and I, and, and the dent reaper sat up there till two in the morning, just talking nonsense dents. You know, it was just really quality conversations and, and uh, I enjoyed it. I, I think we had more personal time at Vegas than I did in Orlando. Yep. More personal conversations and, and, and discussions about things. And I, I've realized that back in the day with the dent industry, um, everything was a secret. Everybody kept everything secrets. Now it's telling ideas or how to help market yourself or tool ideas or it's, 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 we're very lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Daniel asked to resend the link if you can. Okay. I can do that. I can do that. He's not seeing it. Dentdynamics at gmail.com for everyone out there. If you want to spam up uh, Daniel. <laughs> Dent He'll love that. He'll love that. <laughs> um, what was your thought on the, on the tight knit? I, uh, it was, it, I mean, there was no, there was no ego or stuff. Of course you got a couple turds walking through that. Uh, there'll always be a turd in the room. But uh, I, if you just ignore those guys and, and move on and, and carry on with what what your mission to to do when you come to these conventions, and that's to network and find new tools and new techniques and and find out what you do. <clears throat> that uh, you know the other thing too, Ryan, is not everyone's on social media. No, you know? and I met so many people that they don't have Facebook, they don't have Instagram. Uh, we have a sorry face or a sad face from uh, the dent reaper. Duck. 
Hey, I guess he was crying because we were up till two in the morning talking a bit about dents that we started at seven thirty in the morning. So, <laughs> so it yeah. looks like it looks like Matt's giving us a thumbs up on his his uh, his booth. I'm sure he did well. I'm sure he did great because he's got a great product. He does. He does have a good product. Back to the close knit. I think. <sighs> It, it it feels like family when you go to these it feels like you're you're yeah. seeing your extended family you know you're not you're not related i know like when i go visit my cousins in in england i haven't seen them in 15 years and we just pick up right where we left off and it's the same thing when i meet up with ryan it's like hey dude what's going on it's like yeah i saw you yesterday yeah. you know <laughs> you know it, it it's changed a lot it's it, it is nice you know it's uh it's it's fun. You know, it's just fun to see guys and, and talk dense and, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just different. You know, like my buddy Josh came with me and he's not a dent guy and we were leaving and he's like, man, those guys are cool. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, your industry is so different than every other, every other industry out there. And I said, yeah, it is. I said, you know, you've got some, some really good guys that, share information and help you. Hey, I need help with this. I talked to Jason last night. I'm like, look, dude, Jason, the dent lion. I said, I need help with this whole geo labeling pictures. And this dude's speaking a different language than me, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. uh, and, and, and everybody's willing to help. Yeah. Well, you know what? No two dents are ever alike, no. you know, it, it's, it's like a snowflake. Yes. And one from California that's a liberal and all that type of snowflake. But <laughs> every dent is different. You know, why couldn't we talk techniques and how we get to that dent or that area on a car or, you know, what tools are we using in this scenario with this high strength steel or, or you know, and whatnot. It, it's, it's not like we're hurting each other by sharing our techniques. I mean, not at all. Not at all. You no. know, it's at this point, I, I remember here comes Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Let's see what we can do here. Look at this guy. There's the hairy monkey. I don't oh. think we can hear him. No. Fix your mic, boy. Bottom of the screen. <laughs> How's that? Oh, there you go. That's much better. What's up, Daniel? Dude, I'm so sorry. What are you sorry about? Um, I've been me... talking to you for five days. We're not sorry. <laughs> Oh man, I was rushing to get this job done and I was hoping the guy was going to be happy with it when I was done. And, uh, fortunately he was, it was a $1,600 job. So I was trying to make it right at the very well, I'm end. I'm glad you made it right and not worried about our, uh, our, our little dent digest show. So, so we're, we're going through, sh through a little bit of MTE. We're going through some tools. Uh, yeah. we, we kind of, um, went through, you know, what we thought were some of our favorite tools. We started going through that. So your balloon tool came up, your balloon whale tail. That's badass. Thank you. Um, Thank what you. if you picked one tool that you picked up at MT, what would that be? Um, I got this unique thing. Oh yeah. Uh, God, what did he, I, I don't even remember what he called this. Do you remember Vince? What they're calling this dent defender. 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 That's right. Defender. So, He's out I, of Texas. Yeah. And uh, he hasn't even been on the forums or anything like that. Really didn't know anything about anything and put this to out. And this guy was was really pretty. He was a character. I mean, he put it on gloves and has this <laughs> thing was. polished out. He makes these hand makes them himself and he's got a patent on it. He goes, I waited until I got my full patent, not a patent pending. And he was so proud of this thing. And I, I kind of fell into his enthusiasm and, um, I played with the tool and I go, yeah, this thing works. These two big forks here really kind of hold the panel down when you're pressing on it. And it works really well. Um, you know, if, if I were to critique it a little bit, it would be great if it had a spring in it. So it would kind of spring, back. Uh, spring back um interchangeable tips maybe yeah yep yeah, that would have been nice and oh, it and does maybe, work fine the way it is yeah no it, it works 
tremendous. It's a, it's a great tool. I mean, I might put rubber handles on it, you know, his details like that. Unbelievable. Yeah. It wasn't it. Right. I mean, he wore white gloves and he, when you, when you bought, I was there when you bought that and, you know, he takes a tool and he's wiping his, his handprints off of it. And then he puts it in a microfiber bag inside this canvas. Like this guy was so passionate about that tool. And we had just stood there and watched him and it, just watching him, why did you make you buy another? Yeah. You know what Hold I mean? Hold it up to the camera. Let everyone see it a little I, bit. I, I told him, I go, I'm going to get my greasy paws all over this. There's no, <laughs> it was kind of funny that he was doing that. So it's a fender tool and uh, it comes with a, a nice rubber cap. So you can go steel or this one cap. So what I didn't ask him and I, and I thought about it afterwards, I'm like, how do I get more of these caps? Um, these are Dentcraft? They're Dentcraft, yes. Really? Yep. You can buy them. They go on their plastic knockdowns. Okay. Cool. They'll come in different colors, but they're all the same thing. It's a hand dip tip. Okay. Cool. Uh, haven't got a chance to use it in real life yet. So I uh, haven't had that situation yet. So I'm so excited. Man, no bench grinder yet. No. Just, uh, <laughs> just I'm going to use it raw and how it's intended and, and, um, try it out but i did i did try it out oh there you go yeah i did try it out at the show and he he was like wow you know what you're doing you fix that fast and and i went oh okay it's, i guess that other people weren't as fast i don't know um you're just the best when, daniel nah um uh, they were pretty i mean they're small i mean it was just it's an easy i mean if you're using the other uh pliers it's pretty much the same kind of thing, but you're, you're getting more support on the panel. So it's a little, it's different. It's definitely, and it different. has padding on the backside, right? Daniel, that was one yeah. thing that I was worried about. Yeah. And it comes with an extra set of padding that you can uh, carve this off and glue another one on there. So with a bench grinder. Yeah, it was, it was pricey. This was $240. So it wasn't cheap. But like, like you said, the guy's passion sold me, you know, yes. I was like, he hand makes these in his garage. What's that worth? I said to myself and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm buying in, you know, I like supporting new guys. Um, it would have been great if we would have uh, maybe gotten this on our hands on it a little bit early and be able to coach him a little bit. Um, that would have been great and put our suggestions but you know what? When, when you talk to a toolmaker, you know they'll all a lot of times you go, well, what about this? What about that? And they'll give you arguments and say, well, the reason I didn't do that is because of this. And then you go, okay, yeah, I get it. I see why you didn't do that. So, who knows? You know. And he knew nobody. You know, when you no. guys walked up, he didn't know who you guys were. Nothing. Perfect. He, he wasn't. Of everyone's on social media. He hasn't been on social media until he launched this thing. So, um, but I liked it. There's actually two, and and actually there's two guys there that really um, came to the show and didn't didn't know anybody or anything. And I got that other tool here. These little minions, I call them minions. <clears throat> Did you already talk about them, Vince? No, not yet. Go no. ahead. That's all you. Yeah. Hold on. Do, are both of your spring loaded? Because I got two no. spring loaded ones. No, one's solid, one spring loaded. Okay, maybe we should give one away. Uh, you know, I'll send you Ryan. I'll send you one. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Try so I put I I took out the rubber thing and I put a green one on the spring loaded one. Of course you did, and you took it to the uh, the knife. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say it. I was on cue. <laughs> um. But uh, you know what? You know what was interesting. You know who said he really liked these was Tom Price. He said he liked this idea. The curmudgeon. Which, the yeah. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not listening. That's fine if he does. He knows I love yeah. him. Yeah. Fine. Now we love Tom, but he's usually very cynical about new tools. And I was like shocked that he was like, "Yeah, I think that's great." And he, the guy that. Um, this guy was very open. He goes, look, I know I was going to get criticism for this. I, he 3d printed these. I don't know how he did that, but there's some engineering going on in this yeah. thing. 
Um, it, it makes it it's a good concept. You know what I mean? When I when I first talked to him, I was like, okay, you know, that's it, it's got the old school metal working part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, did you guys ever see that guy that made a tip that looked like a crown? Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was to me when I saw this was, will it shrink metal? You know, mm -hmm. if you look at a shrinking hammer, it's kind of the same kind of thing. It has a waffle pattern. And so I'm wondering if you could actually shrink metal like this. And, um, you know, he picked a square pattern. Maybe it should be a round pattern uh, rather mm -hmm. than a square pattern. Um, but he's going to make these into tips. So he was getting, he was there to get feedback from everybody, which, you know, what isn't a bad idea. Um, he, um, he was open. He was a super nice guy. And, um, Dwayne Lagenfield. That's it. Thank you, Dwayne. Uh, super nice guy. He, he was, you could tell he was very shy about, uh, and a little, maybe a little bit overwhelmed by everything. Um, but we try to make him feel at home. Hopefully he'd felt that way. And I, you know, here's the thing, a new guy coming out of the field, making a tool. It's a big deal. It takes a lot of your heart and soul to make something new, but guess what? That's not, that's, that's the first of many things coming down the road that guy, you know, this might be, this might be a total flop. It might be a huge, uh, huge thing. You don't know. But what's this guy going to come up with, you know, down the road? And we got to take these new guys that are coming in as tool makers and we got to, you know, welcome them in and take care of them because they're the future of our industry. And totally. we got to, we got to make the best of it. And um, hopefully they, you know, Chad, Chad Peters is a, is a great example. The man new guy out of the box. Um, we started working with them a little bit and, um, now he's hooked up with Todd and they're both working together. Um, I have a couple things that he's, he's doing for me. Um, those straps, I think those straps that he, uh, did you see those straps that he did on the, um, on the carbon tech hood stand? Oh, ben didn't. Ben I, didn't I missed ben. it. So th they're the same straps that he has on all the other stuff, you know, the, the ratcheting straps, but he put a ratchet on it so you could ratchet down the hood and it's rock solid. With like the boot straps. Yeah. yeah. Like yep. the ski boot strap. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I mean, once you ratchet down your hood, I mean, it, it ain't going nowhere. You know, a, a rope thing, it does all right, but it, it kind of gives and loosens up after a little bit. Yeah. And those, and those straps don't. So, I, I, you know, I sat there and talked to him. I go, well, what about the straps doing this? And what about the straps doing that? You know, I'm looking at it. Hey, can I use it in, in the tank vice somehow? Um, yeah. So I think there's a lot of possibilities with those things. Um, and we hashed out a bunch of ideas. So we'll see what come, it's going to come down the road. I love watching two guys. And, and they, you look at Todd's product and you look at Chad's product and they kind of both – are making hail rods so they're in the same business and they come together and they're they not enemies together, and they're building badass tools yeah and that says a lot to the their character i mean both those guys um i know i know todd a lot better than chad but um but they're single-minded you know that's I, I think that's why they came up with that leg logo which yeah. was really cool and chad so. doesn't sleep so that guy runs on about Maybe two hours sleep. I mean, he's a he's yeah. a really him and his him and his wife are are sweethearts. Uh, yeah. His wife is golden. Um, so she, uh, she is we're a, gonna get great things out of him for yeah, sure. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. One thing that I have not brought on yet, and I did get, and I used it today on three cars, is the B and D prop and lock extender. Oh man, that's what I brought one of those. <laughs> so I really enjoy it. It's it, it's well made. I mean, it goes way out there. I used it on two lift gates on what was it? It was a Sienna and a brand new Expedition, which is kind of a tall vehicle. Yeah. And this thing really got it up there. I think but, that's where it really shines is on lift gates because yes. you know 
when it's in its normal state, it, it's a little bit, it needs to go a little bit farther. I don't know. I mean, if you're like Todd's height on hoods, you may need this. Oh, true. Yeah. Right. You know, Daniel and I are really short fellas, so I don't <laughs> think we're going to have the problem. But on lift gates, this is where it is. This is. Right. It, it, yeah. it, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm buying this. How much is it? Well, well the cool thing is you can, you can add more than one. Yes. You can keep adding them. Get longer and longer. Yes. So I'm kind of excited about that because I, I actually do more lift gates than probably hoods, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. And you're always, you know, you have to have them at that right height that's comfortable with your, your eyesight and where your wherever the dent is. So it's it's nice for sure. And he had some other stuff you were saying, Vin, on the um on the edge pliers. He had so it's got the smaller footprint here and it had a wider footprint here. Yes. For the line of bridge. sight. Larger bridge. Yeah. Larger so, and thinner. I did not pick a set up, but I will have to. So yeah. I I got mine today because I had to order it. Um, but I didn't have time to assemble it, so I didn't bring it. Um, so he's extending it so you can get further inside a, a, a fender. Where I'm really kind of excited about it. Talking about something different, Daniel. No, no, he made it so it extends that, that know, way. He made talking, it here too. Talking about the bridge, yeah. The, Daniel's talking about the the length. You could okay make it longer, yeah, the, and wider, and wider, yeah. So you get to do both, yeah. Which on uh, motorcycle fenders uh, could be exciting. Hi, Jill. How are you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she you. she knows everybody now. Yeah. <laughs> That's the result of MTE Vegas right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the women's getaway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I love that Mike's uh doesn't see his tools as done. Yeah. Hey, let's make it better. Yeah. Make it I, I had some suggestions for him too. So you might be seeing something even better with that bridge coming out here shortly, just to make it that much better. Yeah. He's never gonna stop. And what's yeah. great is, you know, you just buy an accessory and it does something else. Yeah. You already have the main tool and you just buy the accessory and, and multi-purpose it. What else do you have there, Daniel? So I picked up this uh, whale tail tip. From Ultra? Ultra. And it's curved. And I'm actually really excited about this because when I'm working on motorcycle tanks, um, if you've got a dent around the fuel opening, um, I have a, we have a hook tool, but it can only hook so much because you have to get it in there. And if you hooked it too much, you just, you wouldn't even be able to get it in the hole. I have um, one tomorrow. Can you send it to me overnight, please? Like literally? Sure. You can drive over to Ultra, man. Oh yeah, that's probably closer. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we all don't have that leisure. And, um, but sometimes I, I, I think I could go down to the bottom of the, the edge of the tank and maybe use this. So I don't know. Um, I, I got to play around with it, but I'm excited about it. So it's a little thing, but it's the little things that make your life wonderful. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, go ahead. Did you get any cam auto glue at all? Or do you have some already? This is the Kiko. I'm yeah. The Kiko. You know what? I, I didn't, I had, I only got like a couple sample sticks and um, I can tell you this. <laughs> okay. First of all, you have to let it set up for at least four minutes. So uh -huh. it's longer setup time. It smells funny too. It smells like Canada is what Ryan told me. It's a Canuck. <laughs> Canuck. <laughs> um, but it ain't coming off. <laughs> no. Good luck getting that stuff off. Don't right? use it on regular. It, you really want to use that when you really want something super heavy duty. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely and, tacky. I mean, and be careful. Be stuff. careful because it's, it's, uh, it could pull paint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, the, it's so, it's probably the strongest glue I've ever tried. I had Shane working on a civic dog leg with that and it was just smashed all the way in. And I was like, just try it. You've got nothing to do. Just, just got nothing to lose. <laughs> I bought a ton of that at MT last year. Let, let's see what it does. And he pulled it out. 
with that glue and some super tabs and then worked his way down. And the shop was like, I can't believe he pulled that out. Yeah. And I'm like, it's this glue that, you know, the guy would glue to a frame or a front rad support and lift the car off the ground with a forklift. Yeah. You know, Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy strong. It's just, you got to be a little bit more patient and, um, it's not fun to clean off. The Is panel. it coming off with the, the alcohol, ninety-one percent? Yeah, but you're you're going to be picking at it. It's still picking. picking. Yeah. yeah. What about heating it up again and like helping it? Yeah, out? yeah, doing all the tricks. You it know. reminds me of the old glue with denatured alcohol back in the day when it would get right. a little slimy and it would just come off in little pieces. It's it's a little bit of work. Yeah. yeah. Good Case question. It does Dave. release with ninety-one percent. Yeah good to know have you guys been using the uh keystone kiko alcohol no so Mm. it's got ethanol in it um it's 99 percent. it works really really well we we can't get that stuff in california 91 look at that technically as much as the the vocs or something yeah i have seen 99 but it's come from mexico across the border or arizona yeah, this it works really well. Hmm. Work, Kiko sells it direct now. Um, oh, maybe they'll I ship spent a lot of time with the guys at Keystone, like with the bottle. You know, they I'm close to a big Keystone thing here, so we they, whenever it's something like that, they'll kind of send my way. And they spent a long time with the chemist. They spent a long time with the bottler to make sure the bottle doesn't expand and crack or dry out. If it doesn't spill easy, you know, it, they spent a lot of time on it. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah. Well, that's part of the thing with Kiko coming up now. I mean, th- like we said, they're spending money on stuff that costs a lot of money to do, like the mold for the silicone and, and yeah. you know, this and that, getting chemists involved. There's a lot of science that goes into one of these tabs, a yeah. lot of science. When we had Chris White on on the, the show, he shared a little bit, but off camera, he shared a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a lot. You'd be surprised. Time bending. And then with Craig Dyer, with glue technology, there, you know, not all glue is the same. And so much chemistry is going into, you know, a stick of glue to come out with a good glue that works. Yeah. yeah. It. So what do you got there? I think I see a little bit of stand liner. Yeah. You know, I'm a huge fan of stand liners, stand liners. God, I always say that wrong. Stand liners. <laughs> uh, they're, I guess they're, I guess it's their quarter inch. It's probably in millimeters. Mm-hmm. It's close to a quarter inch uh, diameter, and they're it's long. Simple. They're long, mm-hmm. and there's nothing stronger. I mean, these. He says they're um, they're some kind of steel for aircrafts, um, and it's one step down mm-hmm. below Damascus steel. Military grade. A it's it it. Um, I'm going to tell you, it's badass. Um, for this length, if this if this was any other uh, company's steel, I, this thing would be bent silly. And this thing is strong as new Can we rope. See the tip a little bit more, more? Quit yeah. shaking it around. They there. polish the very end of it, so it will rust. He says it will turn a little rusty color, but they polish the very end. And that tool, I I bought that one also, and that thing is sick. Does so I have I have his. Is it good on the heel? Is that a blade? Yeah. It yeah. It's, it's kind of sharp on this edge. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have the, I have every tool he has in this diameter and I use them all the time. And I'm surprised at how many times I can, um, take out a large dent with these little tools and stick them through a small hole. I mean, I take on bigger dents than you would actually think you should, um, because they're so strong. And there's multiple points to push on in some of the other ones. Um, but that's how you have to think about this tool is, is multiple points of pushing. Yes. So like you could stick this to the edge and use the tip as the leverage point and use the round part as pushing the dent, the, so- the larger round point. Mm-hmm. So um, just love all of this. You know, if, if you're, if you're wondering if you should buy some stand, stand liner tools and you're 
don't know what to buy, I say start with the small diameters because yeah. they're easier to figure out. Um, they're smaller versions of the big, bigger tools, basically. So once you understand these, then you'll understand the bigger ones. And it's a good place to go and start with. So And they're well made. I mean, it's it, it is, I oh, bought yeah. that same thing. I, I actually use that on a Ford Explorer through the handle hole and fixed up by the belt molding. And it had so much power. I mean, it yeah. was. It's ridiculous. You know, that, yeah. that tool is, is, uh, is sick. Yeah. So. How about you, um, Ben? You got, you got another one? You got uh, something else? Well, I do have fishtails like that too. It's a little bit bigger diameter though. The last thing I brought to the table was the mat. Ooh. It's made by the Reflecto mat. You got yours in the back there, Ryan. Yeah. So uh, what's cool about this is you're either going to be a line guy or a fog guy. One of these sides is probably going to be sacrificial because you're going to be throwing it on the ground. Mm -hmm. It is abrasion resistant and puncture resistant. It's also a closed cell. So if you're on a floor that's wet, it's not going to absorb any moisture or, or water at all. So in, in theory, it's supposed to stick to it and not slip out. If you kneel on it, it's not going to slip out from underneath. Right. Uh, obviously, this side is going to be the sacrificial side for this man. Oh, right? yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Here's, here's one thing I would say to everybody. Don't let it sit in the sun for long, long periods of time. And why? Uh, well, I have some. I, I buy these kitchen mats from Costco. <clears throat> and they're very, very similar to that. And I left one on the roof. Um, I cl had to climb up on the roof and I was using it to kneel down on my roof. It's corrugated. And I forgot about it. And I left it up there for like um, about a month. And I <laughs> finally, I had to go back up there and I go, oh, there's, there's where I left that. <laughs> and the sun destroyed it. Just yeah. destroyed. Yeah. yeah. Well, it gets like 106 degrees out where you are, man. Yeah. For, for a month in the sun. Okay. Yeah. So don't leave this out in the sun for a month. Yeah. But I've been, I mean, I've already gotten it really dirty and it wipes right off. I'm kind of surprised how good it's already. That's like injected it or something, correct? Yeah. It's What's injected that? with the ink. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like it's going to come off at all. I mean, you could totally bend it. Uh, like Matt just said, you could bend it along a, a, a wheel well on a rear quarter panel to follow the body line and use it. Uh, I used it today on the hood. I threw it on the hood because I had to work mm -hmm. on the hood. And, you know, Ball sometimes check. getting your board there, it's like, ah, it's a pain in the butt. But you just throw that on the hood and, and do your, your deal and get on and off of it. Uh, it's made in the USA. It's made by uh, TDN or TDN supplies it. You could get them at Anson. You'll be Incredible. able to get them at InVenture Tools. Yeah as well uh i've used it every day since i got it on on uh, since i got back since monday and uh, so it's really good. that mat i have a larger one that's called the forever standing mat it's made by ego neil who makes that physical foam material it's almost like a memory foam yeah. and i've had that mat for four or five years and i've dropped tools in it, it, it it's jabbed it and put a little mark in it Mm -hmm. it's still a badass mat. I mean, it, it lasts. I saw the people there and I said, they're like, stand on this. I'm like, I've had that mat for, for four or five years. I mean, it, it's an awesome mat, you know, it's kind um, of self healing, right? Yes. I'll yes. I mean, it'll tear. If you hit it with a knife, it'll, it'll put a hole in it, but it won't spread like an average mat. No, I just poked it with my, my little pokey knife here. Look at this guy stabbing mats. We're getting real here. Really? Hey, we put these tools to the test, man. Put it in a blender. See what happens. Oh, let me I just stabbed it really good, and it's not tearing apart at all. Let's see here. No, no, no tearing. I mean, right there. Look. Oh. Look at that. Oof. Like, there's some holes. You can see yeah. them right there. But it's not, like, ripping apart at all. I'm pulling on this really hard. On the sacrifice side. Oh. Look at the that. Sacrificial side, of course. The, the Mike Toledo side. That's what I'm gonna say. Mine, mine's gonna say Mike on the bottom of it, and it's just you know. <laughs> Put I tell him all the time. I'm like, I don't know how you fix dents. He's like, What do you mean? I said, I can't see a damn thing with lines. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. You got something else, Daniel? 
Yeah, I picked up the Willy Quick. Oh, look at this. Oh, you picked it up? Yeah, was that yours? <laughs> it probably How was you for that, Daniel. Mr. Was that Fox, yours? Discount. Someone, I, I, you know what uh, Hudson said? When's, uh, uh, Vince is a short timer, man. He's not going to be pushing dents. He's, he's going to be. <laughs> so you can blame it on Hudson. Okay. Little bastard. But, you know, I, I've been curious about this because I've seen a couple people talk about it. But what nobody talked about was, um, and I was curious, is is there, I okay, first of all, let me go through it. So here's the pros of this tool is it's lightweight, super lightweight. It um, doesn't take up a lot of room in your toolbox. Um, it's quick and easy to set up. Um and of course carbon fiber always looks cool everybody loves carbon <laughs> fiber so there is the cool factor um the cons of it is this end here has some play in it and on the door it doesn't really make a different big difference to me i mean i we use stack for years and years and that has a little play in it so there is some play in this on a hood I have a little bit more problem with the play and I wish they would have basically done the same thing over here. I think yes. they, I think they could have threaded all the way through here and they could have maybe done the same thing. I don't know. Um, but the play, um, you know, is, is a little bit of an issue. And, um, but I just want to make it aware of, to people when they're choosing the tool, um, but the lightweightness, uh, how quick and easy it is to set up simple. It's a great tool. Just note that there is some play in here. And Matt's asking how much, I think it's 200 bucks. Yeah. Um, you know, it's carbon fiber is expensive. Um, I've been learning a lot about carbon fiber working with Todd and how much, uh, you know, they sell it by the square inch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, not by the foot. Yeah, I think it's uh, two hundred bucks. I know he sells out a lot. I know uh, Anson PDR carries it too. And when I got it, this end, I I had to take this to the bench grinder. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. I took it. it to the bench sander, I should say, the bench sander. Uh, and I had to, it, the edges were all rough, and I didn't like that. So I, I'm sorry, Bobby. I softened I softened all the edges and polished it a little bit so it feels good in your fingers. So awesome. Yeah. Are you saying you have soft fingers? No, I like things soft in my fingers. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that I think that's that has the soft fingers. No, he's just got little fingers. Mm. Little sausages. Yes. Yeah. We like to tease him about that. I'm trying to think. Um, I think that that's all I've got with me. I mean, you missed the good stuff, so you know yeah. the glass. Yeah, you're really the game, Daniel. Yep, yep. That's all right. It is all yeah. right. Yeah, and that's. Um, yeah, the the I think Kiko is on fire right now. Yes. They've, I've been using the dead centers, um, and they friggin' work like everybody's saying they're working. Uh, the crease tabs are working great. And um, I broke my first round tab today. Really? Yeah. Um, I saw guys so, on Facebook breaking the crease tabs already. So, you know, yeah. um, I don't get too upset about that kind of stuff. I don't know. It shouldn't. I don't think guys should make a big deal. These are expendable type of tools and yes. consumable, definitely. Yeah, they're very consumable and they're gonna break. You you fix one dent with it, it's it's paid for itself then yes. ten times over. So just man up and buy some more. You know, I had yeah. some really cool stuff this year was dent craft. Yeah. Oh god. You know, um, yeah, we didn't really even get to really dive deep into their stuff. They added quite a few tools. I got to uh, talk to them a little bit. Yeah, ratcheting handles now to push down rather than yes. Up. Yeah, and they're those ratcheting handles are very inexpensive. Yeah, I mean the ratcheting handles they were selling for sixty five dollars. Yeah, 
So very. I did very buy recent. the uh, Fender blowout tool from them. Oh, I did get that too. I haven't used it so, yet. It's. Uh, we're gonna see what happens. I bought it. I bought it uh, about two or three weeks ago. Uh, I did a little barter with one of the the girls there in the office for some mats, but uh, it, it's it it works great. It's not going to work on every fender blowout or prevention. Uh, it's, you're not always going to be able to ratchet it onto uh, the, the the strut mount or the spring and stuff like that. Look for other places because really you want it to go directly 90 degrees because if it if it goes like that, it, it's not tight enough and it slips off the fender. Okay. So you really want to go directly wherever you're hanging them. If you could find a place directly behind it and go straight to it, and connect it you're going to have better success rather than you know going in on an angle to the strut mount and we actually i had breakfast and uh tj was with, at breakfast with us and we were talking about how the ratchet straps now have to pull back towards you're pulling into the well with the ratchet straps and he said a lot of people were hoping that you could pull out out yeah so he's he's trying to see if there was something he could do or not there you know there's a lot of engineering to that part of it yeah yeah, that makes sense because it, you do you do have to go into the wheel well and pull mm -hmm. away from you rather or yeah pull away from you you're not pushing away from you what uh, about what if it had the straps like uh from endeavor you still have to have something to, to ratchet it onto or yeah. to hook it on i know but there's yeah. yeah. different straighter maybe yeah yeah i don't know okay go talk to todd and, and chad <laughs> <laughs> but you know they also had a the their standard um hand tool set so you have the three or four different sizes they made those sharp tips now um they had a lot of new stuff this year i, I was super excited yeah. yeah we're gonna have to spend a little bit more time with them um and and see everything they have the big question that I heard around MTE Vegas was when are they coming out with the dent gear stuff? Because especially on the West Coast, there's a lot of dent gear fanatics out here, and uh, they haven't really released all that many. You could go back on Dentcraft. You could go on the Dentcraft site now, and they do have new NOS. Old stock. stock. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there's a lot of guys really wanting their favorite tools manufactured again and they're not really coming to the table with those just yet and i, I don't know why so uh, i kind of had richard and i had a nice long talk with richard about that and it's another step so you know their tools are are the raw steel that you have to oil because it's going to rust dent gear stuff was chrome plated yeah so that's a whole nother step for them to go through to to get bring to the table I don't think um, that's I, I don't really think that's important. I don't, I don't think it is too. In fact, no. chrome plating is is in my opinion, that's one thing that veered me away from dent gear. Yes. Because chrome when you start oh, bending crack. tools, it starts cracking off. Yes. And yeah. chrome and it's sharp as hell. It's sharp. And if you get a chrome sliver, it could actually kill you. You know, yeah. that it's it's a chemical that uh if it's embedded in you, you have to go like have it removed because it will it's a toxin. Hmm. It, it, and I, I, I was, it may be, it may be Orlando. So, you know, they were, they're really working on trying. I think they focused on getting some of this new stuff out because that ratchet handle has been in the works for a little while. They should just be using the designs and, and yes. using their, their handles and their, you know, steel. I don't and they have their, their new glue tabs too. You know, they, they spent a lot of time on the glue tabs. So I don't know if you guys check those out. It's got a metal core. With yeah, actually, I, I got some uh, at Texas, and um, I wasn't. It's not something I keep going back to. Let's yeah. say that um, they I'm, I'm a fan they of Kiko. They, they weren't bad. They weren't great. They're were just like, Meh, yeah, mm -hmm. they they work good. Well, there might be another company coming out with what they're claiming to be an indestructible glue tab. So be on the look for that. Probably by Orlando, there will be a well-known company coming out with what they're going to call a indestructible glue tab. But I don't see that why that is important. I want it. I just want a tab that pulls great. In fact, if it pulls once and 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 guaranteed to break, I'll keep buying them. Yeah. Sure. 
But there is a market for guys that want their glue tabs to last forever. Really? Yeah. Cheap bastards like you? <laughs> yeah. I've been using the, the red blem crease tabs forever. Yeah. And they've lasted, you know, I mean, they last a long time. Yeah. You can tell that plastic ain't, ain't going nowhere. No. no. And it's made in-house. They make them there. Yeah. So. It's kind of like uh, uh, the, the Atlas tabs. Those suckers never broke. Yeah, no. same plastic, I think. I mean, no. they uh, they never broke. I still use At Atlas tabs too. They're great. Yeah, it's. I've never used one. Oh really? I've never used one. I'll I'll stick some in the bag for you when I send you out. This. Oh, the, that <laughs> Atlas little crease tabs. I love those things. Yeah. Look really? Yeah. yeah. They look like the Blem, except for they have the Atlas uh, texture to them. They're not smooth tabs. No, no, oh. the ones the ones that look like the old um, Worth. Oh, the chronos, the big suckers. Oh, no, they got the slit in the center. I don't so, think okay. I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those. I, I like that tab a lot. Yeah, it works good. Uh, so what do you what is your prediction for tool innovation for for uh, Jul for January? I was going to say July, but it's January. Honestly, this show showed a lot. It showed the pretty much a lot of the hands of everybody. Um, I don't think you're going to see a lot of new stuff. Um, I only know of a couple people that couldn't get stuff for this show. So they're waiting for the next show. So a lot of people were showing off what they had this one. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're waiting anymore, Daniel. I think as soon as a new tool comes out, they they're showing them. You're right. You're right. Um, you know, I, I um, am very pleased with Blem and their whole process and i plan on doing a lot more with them in the future yes. um they're good people they're good, good people. people they make a great tool have a great handle um but their capability of being able to forge is huge and um i shared one other idea when i was there but i've got i got more if they can do that forging process um you know, there's another tool that I made back in the day that I, it's a uh, upper brace tool and the thing was forged and it's fantastic. It's a little bit short. I, I wish I made it longer, but when it works, it works better than any other upper brace tool. And it's slight. it's, you know, the thing about forging is you can get it super paper thin and it's super strong. Yeah. And when you're working on those upper braces, you need something very, very thin because they're always tight, tight braces. And, you know, and um, if I can have that tool remade, oh, man, people would love it. So. so one of the guys has been using the hog tabs. He says he's enjoying enjoying the oval ones. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 work great. They're a great tab. Um, I don't push them. I, I don't push any of my stuff that hard. Um, I don't know. I always get kind of conscious of, of pushing my own stuff. I want to, <laughs> we don't, don't know why anything, dude. I, I don't push my mat. We don't push the Viper skins. <laughs> I think that worked horrible. <laughs> the Viper skins are, are a collaboration for PDR tool time that we actually get 5% back for each sale. So we get about $2 and 50 cents per, uh, <laughs> per I don't bar. even know how anybody's making money at the price point you have on that. Cause they're so well made. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's now my favorite. I, I took one of uh, the tequila tools, put that handle on it. And then I put the X grip on it and it feels so good in your hand. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I did have to take it to the bench grinder. Oh. Okay. And I shortened it. Uh, the throw on it was um, a little bit too long. I like it. A I wanted it a little bit shorter, but that's what's great about that because it's long. You can do that and make it any length you want. And uh, it's my go-to window tool now. I had one. I had one just like it from. Um, oh gosh, who was that from? I can't remember now. I have another tool like it, but the handle was worn out. It's been years, so I've worn the handle out, and um, so that replaced it. So hey, Chad Peters, yeah, he's saying some new stuff in Orlando and the and Mike from B and D. Yeah. 
Mike, he, he hasn't stopped by my shop all week. I'm surprised. Normally, he's coming over and uh, taking me to lunch and show me all the new stuff. I haven't seen him. What's up, Mike? He's been hiding. Yeah. Show me lunch. <laughs> so I want to get this thing wrapped up. Vince and I have been rambling on for an hour and a half. Um, it's good for the West Coast guys. A lot of West Coast guys popping in here because it's it's later in the afternoon. Um, I am moving the live show to 9 o'clock. So I had a lot of requests to kind of move it a little bit. 5 o'clock, your guys' time is just hard. But 10 o'clock was hard for me. So we're going to be going to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So it'll be 6 o'clock, hopefully. Some of you West Coast guys can enjoy the show live. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Yeah, thanks. You know, uh, I talked to Daniel like a week or two before MTE and said, hey, why don't we get together and and try to get some some tool stuff up there and a little bit of recap of MTE. And it just worked out really well. So I, I really appreciate it. You know, well, we um, appreciate you, man. You're yeah, doing a great job. Right. How can guys get a hold of you? Uh, what's your your best way of communication through Facebook or you know through F- the PDR Tool Time? Yep, through PDR Tool Time. If you need to email us, PDR Tool Time at gmail.com. We have a Facebook group, PDR Tool Time. Uh, with the IMI stuff, you could uh, directly get me on fa- or Facebook or uh, Vince at AnsonPDR.com is probably the best email. Uh, we, like I said, we have those two shows coming up. We have Greeley coming up in Colorado, which is really, it's filled up quite a bit. And then we have uh, PDR World Cup. I'm trying to get to you East Coasters, hopefully by the end of the year. There's a lot of interest with people wanting to host it. So we're talking about having one uh, at Tori's place, potentially uh, another one farther east, maybe at Gene Fetty's place. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, I will get to you, East Coast guys. Just uh, be patient with me. We're just a stepchild. You know, if you guys get enough people together, you know, Vince will come see you. Yeah, absolutely. I need 10 to travel. Uh, yeah. You know, and if I'm going to the East Coast, if I'm flying 3,000 miles, I want two classes. But so honestly, any, any PDR guy could go to their local body shops that they service, and they can easily get those people out of a body shop to to sign up. Oh, I yeah, because 100%. Because you're going to, I mean, how many times do you go to a body shop and they're taking apart these hybrids and they're not powering them down. They don't have don't cones around them. They, they're they just. And they're losing money. They're losing oh, money. God. Yeah. Yeah. Every body shop should have somebody certified. Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. say that. Yeah. Don't say that. Because I'm powering down cars that are, I'm not even the, pushing the dents on the car now. So there's two guys in the classes right now since march we have over 200 technicians now that are are certified and uh i had at least two guys that were making a business out of it going around as rni guys powering down vehicles for body shops and getting paid for it yes charge I one know. hour mechanical and rni to get to the plugs and everything else that you need to put off so very easily you know do the math you know you're at 100 probably 175 dollars per car how many of those do you need to to do a year? And next thing you know, that's an extra ten grand of revenue right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fantastic. No, I appreciate it, guys. And uh, you know, let's. Uh, your guys' show is is really informative. You always have the the newest thing on there, and it's really good content. So I appreciate it. I'm sure all these guys appreciate it. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. a good show. So. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. Join me next week, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And remember, guys, keep it real. See you on the next one.